verses of some hymns together. We'll turn to 480, 480. Uh, we'll sing first and third verses of When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I think we've exhausted all the Christmas store and all the hymns, and we've still another two services to go. So uh, I don't know where we're going to go with, but we've a couple we saved, we deliberately saved for uh, Chris, uh, Christmas Eve night, so we'll be singing them, but uh, we'll sing about the Lord, and that's the theme of Christmas. 480, the first and the third verses, just remain seated as a few others will be gathering in from the children's meeting. Number 95, Man of Sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came. We'll sing verses 1, 3 and 5. It's hard to leave a verse out of this hymn. It's a great hymn. P.P. Bliss, uh, we were singing one of those hymns of his at a funeral service yesterday. And uh, the minister said that it was uh, an individual and he mentioned the person's name, but that wasn't the author of the hymn at all. So he must have been going off the top of his head, but I remember the story. I remember it well, but it was a great hymn of P.P. Bliss. And uh, I think he had a different author and uh, he had the same events, thankfully, but it wasn't the, the author of the hymn. In fact, uh, I don't think that individual actually penned any hymns. <laughs> so and I don't know whether the congregation caught on or not. But anyway, but P.P. Bliss, this is a great hymn of his. Uh, Man of Sorrows, what a name. Verses 1, 3 and 5.
verses of number 85, please. Number 85, thou didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. You'll come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there's room in my heart for thee. Again, we sing verses 1. Now, in fact, we sing verses 1, 4, and 5, first and last two. Amen. mixed up well we'll we'll turn to the psalm section i've been taking this psalm with me the psalm 100 the first version i've been taking this psalm with me just in the visitation that i've been doing over this last number of weeks and just reading the psalm to individuals and then uh, just thinking of a little phrase and just taking out some of the last verses of the psalm where it tells us be thankful unto him and bless his name for the lord is good his mercy endureth to all generations and I thought of those words and it says be thankful unto him and bless his name and the sense of the word in the Hebrew is when you say bless it means kneel to worship that's exactly what that word means when it says to bless the Lord we often say Lord bless me we're not asking the Lord to kneel and to worship us but when it comes to the Lord the word bless to bless the Lord is to kneel in, in humility and to worship. And that's what it says here in the psalm. It says, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Kneel and worship him who loved us. And then it gives us two good reasons why. For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And you can imagine as the, the Muslims have their God and he's great. That's what they say. But he's not good. And someone who's great without goodness is a despot, a monster. And yet someone who's good, but not great, is a weakling. And they're good, but they can do nothing for us. But the Lord, the Bible tells us in the psalm here and elsewhere, the Lord is good. And in the book of Nahum, the Lord is great. And we have a great and a good God. And we can be thankful unto him. And we can kneel and worship him when we think of the giving of his son for us at Calvary. And Christ who came into this world. And we remember the reason for the season that Christ Jesus was born of a virgin, laid in a manger, and suffered, bled, and died on the cross for us. And so the psalm will be a psalm of praise, a hymn or a song of praise for the church. And we'll sing it heartily. And we'll stand together as we sing after the key. The first version of Psalm 100. Thank you. 
maybe sing the doxology after that one, but just not as energetic tonight. But uh, we're going to bow briefly in prayer, just as we do so. I'd just like to warmly welcome you to our, I was going to say a final prayer meeting, but there's still one, and we're not having a Bible study, we're just having a season of prayer, and there will be a change of night. So instead of Tuesday night, we'll be going for the Wednesday night, we'll be going from 8 o'clock to nine, just for a season of prayer. It's nice to end the year just in thanksgiving to the Lord. Keep in mind that in this very uh, place, in this very room, uh, we had seasons of prayer. You remember the seasons we had for the mission? Uh, they were unforgettable seasons of prayer, and there was such brokenness and tears, and we know what the Lord did in the mission. We know that the souls that were saved, and uh, how good the Lord has been to us, how gracious and merciful and kind and the Lord, I believe, has worked in so many ways. And I know things were prayed publicly in this room. And God has answered prayer. And it's always good to return again to the very place uh, where you met with the Lord, where you brought matters to him and give thanks. And we can do that tonight. And I'm sure there were private praying as well. Personal prayers that really you couldn't really utter publicly. And you wouldn't want anybody to know how you felt. And you just poured your heart out to the Lord. And I'm sure there's some here tonight and you have cause and reason uh, to give thanks for answer to prayer, answers to prayer. And the good thing, just as we bow, are about, even though it's a deputation evening, we know that, and there will be uh, the presentation on the word, but it's good for us just to still our hearts for a few moments and acknowledge the Lord. He's been good to us. Uh, we prayed about all the works in this house and uh, this year the Lord has blessed. There's been an increase in our Sunday school and that was a matter for prayer. And God has given new children this year and we're thankful to the Lord. And we've even had to bring in some new teachers and that's really encouraging. And the Mustard Seed uh, Children's Meeting, uh, numbers have grown there as well. And uh, even tonight I just looked in for a few moments and uh, it was a parents' night and the hall was so well filled with boys and girls and mums and dads and grandparents. And it's no small mercy in these days to have these things, I'll tell you. And talking to pre uh, ministers and pastors I can assure you uh, that uh, we don't sometimes appreciate what we have here in the, the fellowship in this house. Our youth fellowship as well. There's been a numerical increase in the youth fellowship on a Friday night. And uh, we made a matter of a prayer for the young adults. Because uh, young people fluctuate. Whatever meeting's on, they will head for it. That's just the way we were ourselves when we were young people. And uh, I always say it's like the bee flying from the different flower after the nectar. And sometimes the nectar is not always the word of God. And many a young man and woman have found their life's partner in some of these meetings. But we made it a matter of prayer. And I have to say to you, probably one of the best years we've had in the young adults. Averaging around maybe on a Sunday evening just in the North Down area. And that's all we centre on. We don't go across the province or invite people from other places. Just North Down, that's all the advert goes out to. And uh, we have an average of about 90 to maybe 100 or so young people every month so they're young adults and we're just thankful to the Lord for what he's been doing and we're praising God that there are souls saved this year quite a number quite a number nobody really knows what the Lord has done and it'd be remiss of us I think just to forget and not be mindful just at the close of an old year just to lift our hearts in thanksgiving and praise and there are folks sitting here who haven't been well and God has given you a touch and he's answered prayer for you and we trust the Lord will continue to bless and encourage your heart. And I do believe he's blessed the ministry. And on a personal note, I want to thank you personally for your support and for your prayers and your encouragement this year uh, through my ministry. And I believe the Lord has been leading us and guiding us and directing us. Uh, even in the study of his word, uh, I did ask you as a congregation to pray. And I have to say this, I had no notion where I was going. And I was looking at different individuals, character studies, books of the Bible, thinking, praying, and asked you to pray. And I do believe God led us to the book of Joshua and also to the life of David. And it's new ground we have taken. And uh, we've gone to the white pages of our Bible. And maybe for the first time they've been underlined and they've been marked and they've been written beside. Uh, these are pages that perhaps we don't frequent and you never get a memory verse from it. I'll teach it in the children's meeting. Uh, but those white pages of the Bible as we will hear, is the inspired word of God. So it's good for the Lord to take us uh, to the white pages of our Bible. Loving Father, we still our hearts just for these few moments. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and the merit of his imputed righteousness and the ground solely of his finished work and precious shed blood, that one great sacrifice for sin forever, we as guilty, hell-deserving sinners enter into thy courts accepted in the well-beloved, saved by grace, born of thy spirit, washed in the blood, declared righteous only for the righteousness of Christ imputed unto us, justified by faith alone, in Christ alone. We bless thee, Lord, no works of man, no human effort or design, not the will of the flesh, but we bless thee, Lord, it's the work of grace, and we worship thee. We come, Lord, as the psalm suggests to us, as it commands us to bless thy name. Spiritually, we kneel before the Lord our Maker, and we worship thee. We thank thee we can say of thee, thou art the creator God, Thou art the maker of all things, the sustainer of all things. And we acknowledge thee as the sole king of the universe and the governor of the nations, the creator of the ends of the earth. And there is but one true and living God. And we worship thee in the trinity of thy sacred persons. To thee, God the Father, who planned our salvation in eternity past, we worship thee. To thee, God the Son, our blessed Saviour, who purchased that salvation for us at Calvary, we worship thee. And to thee, God, the Holy Spirit, who presented that salvation to us in time, we worship thee. And we give thee thanks that not only are you the God of creation, but the God of revelation. We thank thee for our English Bible, the word of God in our mother tongue. We thank thee, Lord, for an understanding from thee, the Father, to understand the scriptures. And we bless thee for opening our eyes. We praise thee, Lord, for opening our understanding and giving us a heart for the things of God. And we bless thee, Lord, and Father God, for all that thou hast given to us. For you're not only the God of creation and revelation, but the God of our salvation. And we worship thee. How good is the God we adore. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord is good, for there is none good but God. And we acknowledge thee, and we bless thee for thy love and thy mercy, for thy grace. And we thank thee for this year, Lord, that is very nearly gone into eternity. And what a blessed year it's been. And we know there's been ups and downs. We know that. There's been highs and lows. There's been discouragements. We know, Lord, there's been hardship. And for many, O oh God, there's been loss. And we pray that at the end of the year that we may recognise that the Lord is good to all. And the Lord has been good to us. And we bow before thee and give thee thanks for what you have done among us. And we thank thee, O oh God, for what you have done throughout our denomination. And even in other places outside our own denomination. We thank thee for precious souls who have come to know Christ as their saviour who are growing in the grace and in the knowledge of Christ we thank thee Lord for the uh, individuals who have come under the sound of the gospel we thank thee Lord for individuals who have been restored to first love again for the answers there's been to prayer and we just lift our hearts in praise and worship of thee and we acknowledge Lord thy blessing upon our children's work we thank thee for our youth fellowship and young adults we praise thee for our seniors meetings we thank thee Lord for the media team we thank thee for those who have helped with open airs and outreach we thank thee for the mission there in the tent and other missions as well we're involved in and we rejoice Lord that we have been given fruit for our labour and Lord we're nothing the glory is thine not unto to us the psalmist said not unto us but unto thy name give praise and give glory and we acknowledge thee lord and we lord thank thee tonight and bless thee for what you have been to us and thank you in this very place here we're in in this very room lord we have poured out our hearts to thee Lord, with brokenness, with tears, we've prayed and we have sought thy face. And Lord, you've been good to us and you've answered prayer. And we want to return thanks again this evening. And even if we're the only one leper out of the ten, then Lord, we want to be that one. Even if we're only a minority, then we want to be amongst the minority that comes again to give thanks and glory to God. And we pray you'll bless us as we finish out the year in the divine will. And you'll remember the 2024, Lord, if you permit us to see it. And if you tarry, Lord, hear prayer. Continue thy good hand upon us now. Thank you, Lord, for even thy presence already here. Thank you for thy servant, our brother, the Reverend Dennison. We thank thee for his labour of love. We bless thee, Lord, for the way that thou art using him. And we pray that, pray that you'll encourage him tonight as he deputises for his work. We pray that you'll encourage his heart and bless the work of the Trinitarian Bible Society. So hear our prayer. Continue with us now in Jesus' precious and worthy name. Amen. Well, folks, we are delighted to have with us the Reverend Craig Dennison. Uh, Craig uh, was for 
a number of years minister over in our church in Gardenstown, and uh, he did a very uh, great work over there. The Lord was with him, and the Lord really did bless him. He was my assistant as well for a year, so he had that to suffer. And uh, he got over that and was able then to get on in the Lord's work <laughs> and go on with the Lord. But uh, we've had some very good times of fellowship and socialising. And we trust the Lord will bless him now as he comes and he deputises for the work. Thank you. I would like to thank the Reverend Martin for the words of welcome and for his uh, friendship down through the years. He has been, was my... Um, senior minister for the year in Lisburn and I've called upon him many times uh, since then. He even had to write a reference for me to go to the TBS and he must have wrote a good one uh, for, the, for the give me the job. But it's a pleasure to be with you here tonight and to be able to share with you an update on the work of the TBS. The TBS have recently given me a new video for a country that's of great interest to you and I'm going to show that tonight but it sort of eats into my other time so you'll forgive me if I'm speaking rather quickly uh, as, we, as we go through the meeting. But I'd like to share, do three things tonight. First of all, share a presentation of the broad work of the TBS and then share a video of a country that's close to our hearts and then finally uh, before I hand back to the Reverend Martin I'll share from the Word of God. So beginning first of all with Bible translation. The TBS began way back in 1831 and in 1835 a gift was given to the Society of £50. Now that's a lot of money today but it was an awful lot of money back then. Back then, it was the equivalent of about £5,200. And it was given that we would produce our first foreign translation. So after much prayerful consideration, they produced the Bible in Portuguese. Now, as such was the demand for a Portuguese scripture in South America that we opened a branch in Brazil back in 1968. And over the last 55 years, this is what TBS Brazil have accomplished. They have distributed over 10 million Bibles, 198 million New Testaments, and they have produced a Bible app in Portuguese that has been downloaded 14 million times. So that very generous gift of 50 pounds back in 1835, the Lord has used and multiplied to reach over 220 million Portuguese-speaking souls with his precious word. It's like the mustard seed. And it is like the little boy with his loaves and fishes. The Lord just kept multiplying it and causing it to grow. And that's only one translation of which there are many. <clears throat> now, sometimes we get asked, why do we do new translations? Particularly when there already is a, a translation in, any, in a, a language. Well, not all Bibles are translated from the same uh, biblical texts. The authorised version is from the Old Testament, Hebrew Masoretic, and the New Testament, Greek Texas Receptus. But many of the modern translations have the New Testament from a group of texts that we call the critical texts. I'll not go into it all here tonight, but just to show you one example. Matthew 5.44, you'll notice that the NIV, which is from the critical text, is considerably shorter. Bless them that curse you is missing, do good to them that hate you is missing, and praying for them which despitefully use you is missing also. In fact, there are 6,000 differences between the Texas Receptus and the modern critical text. You'll not find Acts 8, 37 in the NIV, ESV, Good News Bible, or any other translation. They're trying, they, in many Bibles, uh, they have a disclaimer for the last 12 verses of Mark telling you they're not inspired, that you shouldn't take them as the word of God. They don't believe that John chapter 8, the story of the woman taken in adultery, is inspired or should be in our Bible, and many other things as well. It's a whole subject in itself that I don't have time to go into tonight. But not all Bibles are from the same biblical text. It's a very serious issue. It's undermining the foundations of what actually is the Word of God. They try to print Bibles now, leaving out the last 12 verses of Mark, and so forth. It's a very uh, serious issue. So we translate from the biblical text uh, and put all these missing verses back in where they have been left out. But also, not all translators have an honest agenda. Take the Louis Sagan French Bible, for example. It should read, low in the volume of the book, it is written, off me. Every English translation has off me, but Sagan has for me. Now, this is a messianic psalm. Is the Bible written off Christ, or is it written for Christ? There's a big difference. Well, Sagan was a notable liberal. He didn't like the messianic psalm, so he deliberately mistranslated it. 
And this isn't uncommon. It's very common throughout the world. Look at what the Jehovah's Witness do with their translation. The Chinese Union version is used by 99% of Chinese Christians. But in Genesis 3 verse 4, it should read, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. They have, you may die or you may not die. Well, it goes from being certain to being ambiguous. And that is just a, an example of bad translation. The Turkish translation of 2008, Matthew 5, 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. They use the weaker word, competent. Now, dear friends, there, there is a Turkish word for perfect, but they haven't used it. They've chosen the weaker word, competent. And I would go as far as to say that's actually blasphemy, to say that God is merely competent. This is a liberal translation. And we believe, regardless of what language you speak, you should have the most faithful, the most reliable, and the most accurate copy of God's word from the providentially preserved text. We wouldn't settle for an inferior translation. And we shouldn't allow our fellow men to suffer inferior translations either. At the end of last year, the population of the world reached over 8 billion people. Now, remarkably, from these 8 billion people, 66% of them speak one of 10 languages. So two out of every three people are able to speak one of the 10 most spoken languages in the world. And the TBS have projects either completed or ongoing in eight of the 10 most spoken languages. The two that we don't have are Bengali for Bangladesh and Urdu for Pakistan, totaling over half a billion people. Now, if there were reliable translations in those languages, there'd be no need for us to add another one. Uh, we're not in the business of trying to compete. If there's already a good translation, we will promote it and recommend it and tell people to use it. But the Bengali and Urdu do not have reliable translations. The Bible Society of India, who operate in that uh, area, they don't translate from the original languages. They translate from an English version, and it's not even a good one. They use the Good News version as the basis of their translation. The Good News version that says in Isaiah 7, 14, <laughs> Behold, a young woman shall conceive, yeah. mm -hmm. which is an abomination. Yeah. It's behold, a virgin shall conceive. So do pray that the Lord would raise up translators for Bengali and, uh, and Urdu in print. Uh, currently, we have 21 Bibles, uh, 18 New Testaments, and 21 Gospels. But these numbers are set to multiply in the uh, coming years because we have 52 projects that are ongoing. We have another 15 potential projects that we're hoping to start very soon uh, after all the initial checks have been done. And this map will give you a bit of an, a bit of an indication as to the wide scale of the work. Some languages you'll be familiar with, some you'll maybe never have heard of. They'll be new to you tonight. But there are uh, over 7,000 languages in the world. There are people who maybe only number in their tens of thousands who speak a, a given language, but they need the word of God. They need the scripture to come to them. Paul said, writing to the Romans, how shall they believe on him of whom they have not heard? And very simply, if a person doesn't hear of Christ, they can't believe upon him. We do, we've recently printed a leaflet uh, with this map. If you'd like to take it and remember these projects in your prayers, we would be most uh, grateful. And uh, Just to mention two translation launches here tonight. First of all, the Simte Bible. The Simte people are part of the hill tribes. They live in the Manipur region of northeast India. The gospel first came to them uh, through British missionaries around the turn of the 20th century. Uh, a Scotsman, William Pettigrew, was there for about 40 years. He established a mission centre and he went amongst many of the different tribes, including the Simte. And uh, the gospel flourished in that region and many churches were established. Now, the Simte people had no scripture. In fact, uh, they had nothing until 1975, whenever the TBS printed the New Testament for them. Do you know how many books they had prior to 1975? None. Our New Testament was the first book ever produced for the Simte people. We completed the whole Bible in 1992, but a revision was needed. In fact, a report in 2015 highlighted the importance of our Bible. It said, we the Simte are just at the stage of developing our literature, dialect and grammar. As such, the Holy Bible has become more or less our dictionary and grammar book. So if people wanted to learn the Simte language, they used our Bible. But the last print was done in 1992. Improvements were needed, so we did a revision. That was completed in 2021. We shipped over 6,500 Bibles to the Simte people. One of my managers says he's never worked with a group of people so eager to get their hands on the Word of God. After the uh, 
uh, translation was finished, they would phone up and say, has it been typeset yet? Has it been printed? Has it been shipped? When are we getting our Bible? Well, here's a brief clip of the Bible going out or arriving with them for the first time since 1992. working fine here. I don't know what happened to the picture there. Hopefully the next video works uh, okay. But um, <clears throat> whenever we launch a, a New Testament, a Gospel or a Bible, we have launch services and Thanksgiving services. They were held in several different churches and uh, people gathered to give thanks to God for the uh, translation and printing of their Bible. Uh, they also engaged in distribution with people queuing the length of the church and down into the street in order to get their hands on copies of God's Word. They wrote to us nine months later thanking us uh, for the arrival of the Simte Bible. One pastor mentioned how preaching in the church became very inconvenient without a holy Bible in our own language. Another said many of the youth and the Sunday school students have a Bible for the first time. Another said how having a Bible after such a long gap means quite a lot to them. To God be the glory. One said it's a, a pleasure to know that many of our church members have read the Bible cover to cover in that nine month period with one person even reading it twice in that nine month period. And a student who was at college started reading the Bible the day he received it and seven days later had the whole Bible finished. Wow. Such was his hunger for the word of God. And this was the most common theme. Our new Bible has blessed me tremendously. Now there's been great unrest in the Manipur region, many of the tribe we work with nine tribes there, and the um, most of them have been affected, and they would value your prayers at this time. The next one to mention is the Amharic New Testament. Amharic is a language spoken in Ethiopia. They also speak it in Eritrea, the little country just to the north of Ethiopia. Their speakers found in Egypt, Israel, the UK, the USA, France and Sweden, and about half a million speakers in South Africa as well. But Ethiopia is the main country. It has a population of around 118 million people. They speak 88 different languages in Ethiopia. But Amharic is the main language. There's about 57 million speakers. It's the language of the government. It's the, um, it's the working language. Uh, so if you're looking to engage with uh, the government and so forth, uh, you would really need some sort of grasp of Amharic. They do have the Bible in Amharic, but the translations they have are not very reliable and not very accurate. One of them, one of the better ones, would lead you to believe that Saturday was the Sabbath and they refer to the synagogue as the mosque. Now there's a 40% uh, uh, of Ethiopians are Muslim, uh, so referring to the synagogue as the mosque causes great confusion uh, in a country like Ethiopia. So whenever we finished our New Testament, our lead translator, uh, Halai Amaru, he asked for a meeting of the leading evangelicals. And about uh, 70 of them came out, I think there were 72. And he told them about all the mistakes and the problems and the errors in their current Bible and why we produced ours. And he was expecting a bit of an angry backlash, but there wasn't. In the end, one of the men stood up and said, we cannot disagree with anything that you've said about the current Amharic Bibles. And if yours is as good as you tell us, you'll have our full support. So we went from having one or two launch services to having five last December. There were over 2,000 people at the first meeting. Now, they didn't come because the TBS are famous in Ethiopia. We've never been there before. Uh, the, quite often when we do a launch, um, um, we write out to churches, we write out to mission organizations, we invite them to come. We even put on a free lunch sometimes to try and entice people uh, into the meeting. Uh, and sometimes you get a very small crowd. Uh, but this uh, surpassed our, our wildest expectations. News started to spread throughout Ethiopia about our translation. We had five services. 
Uh, our general secretary went for the first one. I was asked to go for one of the other ones in a city called Breberhan, which is about three and a half hours north of Addis Ababa. And that church was filled. There were 500 people at that meeting. One man told me that he traveled three hours uh, to get to the meeting. Um, and everybody who attended one of our launch services left with a free copy of the Amharic New Testament. <laughs> I spent several hours in the car with Haile Emery and we never went more than 15 minutes without his phone ringing. Are you the man who has these New Testaments? We've heard of your meetings. When are you coming to our area? Can you do a, a meeting in our church? One man involved with a denomination, he phoned up and said, we have about 45 churches. Can you, we've only just heard of your translation. Can you come and do a meeting for our ministers and elders? There'll be several hundred people there. Normally we have to uh, do a lot of work to make our translation well known. But in Ethiopia, um, it, it's working the opposite way. We can't keep up with demand for the meetings. We had to have four more meetings uh, in Ethiopia in the spring. And again, thousands of people came out to these meetings. We're not exaggerating. At one of the meetings, there was a uh, standing room only. You'll see uh, the people standing around the back of the meeting. At one of the meetings, we had only taken a thousand New Testaments because we didn't think more than a thousand people would come. Over 1,250 people came. 250 people left without a, a copy of the New Testament. It surpassed our expectations. In order to distribute literature in Ethiopia, you have to be registered there. And a businessman has very kindly provided us with this office, rent-free, uh, to help us get established uh, in Ethiopia. Um, others have given generously. Um, uh, w w one church in, in America, whenever they heard of this, they give a substantial gift uh, towards buying a plot of land. Uh, because uh, they have a, a dream not just of a, of a small office on the third floor. They want a big warehouse. They want a printing press. Uh, they, they want to see the word of God flood, not just from Ethiopia, but throughout Africa. And these men too, the Ethiopians, they have a tremendous vision uh, to see the word of God accelerate in that land. We shipped 10,000 New Testaments there last December or last November. And within a couple of weeks, 10,000 were gone. We have now sent a total of 85,000 New Testaments. We had employed a lady part-time, thinking uh, we could employ her part-time uh, to oversee the, the, the distribution of these New Testaments. She now has to work full-time in order to um, do this work. She is a uh, scientist. She did lecture at a, a university in the capital, Addis Ababa. She has now uh, left that role and has uh, taken a, a step down financially we might say uh, uh, to be involved with this work but she has a tremendous heart for the work and to make the word of God known there in Ethiopia um, I had to go back uh, to Ethiopia um, last week or about two weeks ago um, uh, one of the things that we're doing in Ethiopia we're hoping uh, to get a branch established there we have branches in Canada America Brazil New Zealand and Australia but there's been tremendous interest in Ethiopia 200 Ethiopians have joined the, uh, as members of the society, uh, which is no small thing. We've only been there a year and 200 of them have committed uh, to, to membership. And uh, it's not a free membership, they have to pay to be members. Uh, so we held an AGM there uh, last weekend and I was invited to go over and uh, uh, preach at that. And there were over uh, 120 people, I think, uh, were, uh, traveled to that meeting. Ethiopia is a very vast uh, country. This is our lead translator um, addressing the meeting. And this is Tikai, uh, the lady who works in our office. And uh, I was asked to go and preach uh, on the Lord's Day as well uh, at a church there. And there was a tremendous reception of that church, so much so that they asked the lead translator to go back to them a couple of days later and tell them even more uh, about the importance of the biblical texts. Uh, because this was uh, new to, uh, to a lot of these people that never heard of the Texas Receptus or the critical text. It was a, a matter that impressed them greatly. Uh, so do remember uh, the Amharic in your prayers. There's plans for more launch services in different parts of Ethiopia in the coming years. 
uh, or in, in the coming year and uh, they've already asked me to go back to Ethiopia f uh, for two weeks uh, next December and they want to take me around different parts of Ethiopia um, now so uh, my wife wanted to take me away for my 40th birthday and I said I'm sorry but the people in Ethiopia got in first so I'm going to Ethiopia for my 40th birthday um, uh, instead but the Lord is doing tremendous things there and it's uh, it's it's thrilling just to see the excitement on people's faces whenever they're handed a New Testament uh, uh, um, on the Word of God. Well, moving on to mention Bible distribution. Uh, we distribute uh, scripture uh, throughout the world. Last year alone, scripture went out to 112 countries in 40 different languages. We distribute it in two ways. We sell to those who can afford to pay for it. Uh, we sold over 4 million items uh, over the last two years. And then proceeds from our sales go into our grant fund that enables us to give away scripture. And over the last two years, we've given away over 3 million items. And it's to men like this. And, and to people like this. Uh, this is a pastor's Bible from Malawi. It runs from Leviticus to Thessalonians because he's worn it out. And he can't just pop down to the bookshop. You can't just go on Amazon uh, because it doesn't work like that in other parts of the world. Uh, he's never had the opportunity to replace it. In parts of Africa, a bi Bibles are so expensive they could send you back one month's salary. Uh, that's how expensive they can be. Um, there's a big overlap between our work and that of the mission board. And these are some of the countries where we have shared interests. India is a tremendous uh, country with a, a great seal for the gospel at the moment. I was planning with my boss for uh, at the start of 2025. They've asked me to go to India um, to do pastors' conferences on the subjects of inspiration and inerrancy. Uh, because although you and I know these things, and, and we've known them from no height, there's many pastors in the world that do not know that this book is inspired. And they do not know that this book is inerrant. And we have many translations going out in, in, in Indian languages. So I've been asked to go and do some sort of um, foundation laying uh, seminars for these pastors to highlight for them the importance of the word. And then they can teach it to their people. A lot of these churches in India are, are first generation uh, uh, churches. I'm going over the new year to speak at a uh, Telugu speaking church uh, in London. And it is a church that keeps growing. These are uh, Telugu speakers from India who have moved to the United Kingdom, are hearing the gospel, and are being converted. And they're planting churches. They are growing. They're taking over churches that are closing down that British people have um, abandoned. Uh, but the Telugu speakers are growing. It's a three-day conference I was Planning it, oh, my time's really going to go here today, but but you're used to that anyway, so <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I was planning for the uh, conference today. It's uh, it's the thirtieth, the thirty first, and the first. It's a three day conference. Uh, some of uh, most of the days it's starting at nine in the morning. I have planned to take fifteen sermons with me, and I'm actually worried that'll not be enough, because the last time they had me down to speak at their church, they have a church in Dublin with eighty people. As a denomination, we don't even have a church in Dublin. They have a Telugu church in Dublin with 80 people at it. They had me down uh, last New Year's to speak. I started, uh, the service started at 9 o'clock, and after midnight I thought, surely that's the end of it. They said, no, Craig's going to come up and preach again, my third sermon of the night. And at half past yeah. one, I pronounced the benediction. <laughs> I, I don't know about them, but I was done. They, they could have gone on all night. And uh, they really are. They have such a hunger for the Word of God, and it's because... They've never known it. They weren't, they weren't brought up on it. Uh, so there's a, a real um, move of the Lord amongst the, the Indian folks. So uh, yeah, there's a big overlap between uh, the TBS and the mission board. We did send a grant out to Uganda of over 800 Bibles and 1,200 New Testaments. And um, uh, all of the children and all the staff members at the school received a Bible. The outreach team were joined by Mrs. Uh, Crane whenever her and uh, the Reverend Crane were out. And they distributed Bibles to the local prison and uh, to other areas as well. We also sent a grant to Kenya. And uh, another grant has gone out in recent times to Mr. Patterson as well. Well, it's at this stage we're going to say goodbye to those who are online because we have a, a, a private video that we have to show. Uh, for confidential reasons, this can't go out online. Uh, it is to do with Nepal. And Nepal, as you'll hear in the video, um, is, a, is a real needy country. But they are clamping down on 
what they call conversions. You're not allowed to try and proselytize, convert people to your religion, and that means you're not allowed to.